So I have them for tonight. She gets drunk. It tastes like a shot of a very strong alcohol. But you won't believe how. You're drinking hand sanitizer. You're a dead woman walking. She's fighting with her family. They don't give me any respect. You caused the chaos. Mooching from mom. You want her to throw me out on the streets. I'd rather have you living on the streets than dead in her house. And out of control. Why do you hate these people? Because I feel that the other fake. You are acting like a freak. You keep drinking this stuff, it's going to kill you. Your daughter's going to throw a rose on top of your coffin if you don't get in the game here. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Go, Dr. Phil. you to meet Christine. She's 42 and the mother of a beautiful eight-year-old little girl. She's also done three stints in rehab. She's had two failed marriages, a DUI, and one near-death experience. Now, here's what Christine looked like a year ago. Uh, uh, uh. So what was that? Well, Christine lay in a coma for two weeks, but after her family made the painful decision to pull the plug on her life support systems, she miraculously rallied and survived. Her family says that within two weeks of coming out of rehab, Christine turned back to the bottle, only this time it wasn't booze. She started drinking hand sanitizer. Take a look. I'm going to fill up these two bottles so I have them for tonight. So this will be my night plan. There we go. I've been drinking hand sanitizer for about two years. I found out about drinking hand sanitizer in rehab. So I have a bottle. I'll fill these up with my 8-ounce bottle. And I'll open it and just, just a half shot. And then a couple hours later, just the rest. It tastes like a shot of a very strong alcohol. The hand sanitizer is 140 proof. Drink about 40 to 56 ounces of hand sanitizer per week. Four to six ounces a day. It's disgusting and weird to hear myself say that I drink hand sanitizer. As soon as I take a shot of it, I feel like I can function. Her behavior is completely out of control. It's crazy that she would drink hand sanitizer. Well, Christine admits to consuming roughly four to six ounces of hand sanitizer a day, but insists she doesn't really have a problem. Her sister, April, says Christine actually drinks this much in a week, approximately 180 ounces, which is almost a gallon and a half a week. She is drinking this. And later in the show, you're going to find out what all is in this. And you will not believe it. Her family is at their wit's end. My sister Christine's alcoholism is killing her. This alcohol is just consuming me. Christine is totally out of control and destroying my family. I can't stand Christine when she's intoxicated. She's never sober. Christine has abused alcohol for eight years. It's cost Christine her marriage, her jobs, her family, her relationship with her child. Who's the one that's getting played with? Her! And her health. The emotional toll that Christine's drinking has had on us is insane. And she's intoxicated. She's the meanest person. Do you hate my guys and I hate your guys? Christine's behavior is chaotic. She calls everybody bitches, whores. Do it. You're Right. I don't. What have I done? One time, I got so mad that I punched her. She grabbed a pan and threw it at me. I have grabbed her hair and said, shut up. Christine has got into a physical altercation with police officers. She was arrested for a DUI. I know of at least a hundred times she's driven drunk, and it terrifies me that she's going to kill someone. 
We've tried taking her to rehab, AA meetings, sober living facilities. I think that Christine's issues are tied to the fact something is going on in her brain. Christine does not function as a normal person. This is completely mind-numbing for me. I am just lost. I don't know what to do for her. My sister is going to die. Her mother fears if things don't change soon, she is going to die in the next six months. Her fears are valid. I think six months is optimistic. It was only a year ago that they pulled the plug on her life support system. Christine has abused alcohol so much, it's a miracle she's alive. Over the past five years, Christine has been taken to the hospital over 20 times. One time she had a seizure in the emergency room because she had a blood clot in her head. A few years ago, doctors suspected Christine had leukemia. Earlier this year, Christine nearly died. She contracted a staph infection. On the back side of her body, she was getting bed sores. She went into the hospital. I can't even do it. After receiving an aggressive round of antibiotics, her liver started to fail, and Christine slipped into a coma. They told us she was dying. They told us that she needed to go into hospice. I was sad and I was angry that my sister was dying. The thing going through my mind was, how are we going to break this to an eight-year-old? Her mom died because she just couldn't stop drinking. Christine was on death's door. We were told to say our goodbyes to her. The morning that we were going to unplug her and take her to the hospice floor, she woke up. It was a complete shock. It was unbelievable. Two weeks after Christine got home from the hospital, Christine started drinking again. Not even a near-death experience stopped my sister. I'm 100% convinced that Christine will die of her disease. Dawn, how real is this to you? <clears throat> it's real. I've never seen her drink hand sanitizer, so that's the first time I've actually seen her. Really, it's, it's pretty horrific. What do you say to yourself about this as a mother? I think I've become numb. I, I don't know what to do. It's so horrifying. You know she's doing this in front of her daughter. You made the decision to take her off life support. Yes. Take me through that moment when you finally made the decision. I, I have to let her go. Christine was so full of life. She's so beautiful. And I thought, if she wakes up from her coma and is a vegetable, that I can't even imagine. And I, I decided at that time, I couldn't bear to see her like that either. So um, it was painful beyond belief. There's an eight-year-old child here. Yes. Okay, and you you counseled her. You told her, it's over. Yeah. We're, we're going to have to make a decision and, and let her go. And it was her belief that her mother had died, correct? Yeah. yeah. But then who forgot to tell her that she had recovered? The first call she made, Mommy, mommy, oh, that's right. mommy, you're alive, you're alive, mommy, that's mommy. Right. I forgot. And all then about I realized, that. oh my gosh, nobody had told her. Oh so she gosh. learned by getting a call from her mother? That's yes. Right. That's right. Yes. That's awful. Yeah. Hello. What? Mommy? Um, just what this child's being dragged through is just. Unbelievable. Christine is backstage. We're going to meet the woman at the center of this drunken dysfunction when we come back. She's detoxing. Christine, do you need this? You're going to stop trying to make me this in front of people. And later... I don't think she's even 
insane. She, she's going to die. This is going to be a saving day in your life if you hear what I'm telling you. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. I was trapped in a religious group and kept as a sexual meeting. She claims she was given to an alleged cult leader. It made sense to you to turn your child over to this creep? I didn't know all those other things were happening. And dad and daughter. You still don't own this, do you? Overcome their past. Are you trying to blame I'm me? I'm not blaming you on anything. It always feels like you're trying to blame me for what happened. Tomorrow. Then on Wednesday, caught in a love triangle. Do you feel guilt for cheating on your wife? I don't consider it cheating. What's so funny? They're laughing because your self-serving bull is more than I can take. Wednesday. One day I heard a thud in the bathroom. I ran in the bathroom and found Christine lying in the bathroom. I had taken a gulp of the hand sanitizer. I got up to come to the restroom, and along my way, I was like, oh, well, I'm feeling really dizzy. And then I remember just um, waking up on the floor, hit my head on the tub, passed back out, and then the ambulance was here. Tony says she is beyond worried that her daughter Christine is going to die in the next six months. Christine says she hates her whole family and says they are the reason she drinks. The fighting that goes on with my family is disgusting. Let me run my daughter's life. My sisters call me stupid. They say you're a drunk bitch. Shut the f up. Go have another drink, another of the year. And the only comment that I have back to them is you're a horror. I tell my family how much I can't stand them. I tell them that I don't want them in my life. I am a mean drunk. I need your mouth to be quiet. When my sister April attacked me, I fought back. That girl will kill me. She would seriously kill me. And my mom, she'll, she'll smack you down too. She just says this. I do feel like my life is spinning out of control. I don't know why I keep drinking alcohol. I feel like there must be something else going on in my head. My brain is not like firing properly. I can stop drinking if I was given the chance to be an independent person and do my own thing and make my own decisions. I want to be a normal human being. If I continue to stay on this path, I'm going to die. All right, Christine, you have been on death's door already. Yes. Uh, are you an alcoholic? Yes. Are you killing yourself? Apparently, yes. Are you doing this on purpose? No. Why are you doing it? Um, the only thing I can say is there's a lot of times I, like when I get sober and I feel sober, but then when things get chaotic in my ass, I feel like, I honestly feel like I'm not a normal person unless I have a drink. And I feel, it just calms my mind down. I feel like I can um, focus more. Why do you hate these people? They, I, I want to say it's hate because I feel that they are fake. I feel like they, if my daughter wasn't here, they wouldn't care if I was here. Well, you I, beat us up. You beat us up all the time. I mean, you say that it's chaotic and everything, but I don't, Don, I don't understand. You I, cause the chaos, you cause the fight, <clears throat> and then it's our fault. Well, I do cause a lot of chaos and fighting, but it's just something that I, I don't know how to stop with you. I can't even have a phone conversation with you. Yes, because I want you two to stop. That's no, because you want her right. to throw me no. on the streets, which, fine. I do. Chris, yes, I, I do. I'd rather have you living on the streets don't than dead in her house. I'm okay. sorry. I love right. you so much. You don't I, love I, me I do. so much. Don't how you do you can't... know? How okay. do you know if you're right. love okay. you? I don't, you're right, I don't know if you love me. You're we, right, I don't. We've been with all, you all every you step of this way. All you see is us angry because you come at us that way. Because it's all I live with. What do you want these two to do? Tell me what you want them to do. Just to be nice. They don't give me any respect. Please these don't. two, they'll walk 20 feet ahead of you. Last night, she had my daughter That's, in the room. You guys are embarrassing to be you're walking a bear. You think when you because tell me. Because you are acting like a freak. You said to us, I can stop drinking. Uh, I'm not going to drink tomorrow. By this time tomorrow, I will not be drinking at all. I, yeah. I, just, you can just turn it off. Okay, I did say that. I want to sound like that person that could do that, but I know that I'm not. But you say, 
But you say you're drinking just because of them. So if no, I just I mean, get rid of these damn people, then you'll be fine, right? No, no, I won't be fine. You know you're sick, right? Yeah. All right, my... look, look what we spent some time filming uh, with Chris and her family. We did not ask him to do anything. Our crew were just flies on the wall. During the day of routine errands, Christine had an episode that almost caused her to faint. Her mother brought her into a bathroom where Tony revealed what she thought was going on with her daughter. I need to get to the car, please. Okay, I'm going to have to throw up. Okay, I'm going to She's detoxing. You don't know what's happening. I do know what's happening. Christine, do you need this? You're going to stop trying to make me do this in front of people. Christina, no. I'm not. I don't know. I don't know no. why you're stop. doing this. Stop. I do not know how to help you. Right now, I feel like I'm going to pass out. I need icy water. Sometimes I just feel weird in my head. Ugh. Can you go to Applebee's and I'll just do a shot of something? You have you. I don't want to get that out of my face. Okay. Get it out of my face. I'm going to throw it out. I will do window. what you want. You won't go to the liquor store? Get it out of my face. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Check out what mom does next. Could I be that far gone that I really need a drink right now and that's why I'm feeling like this? Yes. Because I don't think it is. Then why don't you stop drinking? No, I know I can't stop. I know, I feel like I could though. Like, I don't even, I'm go I want to. I will, I... Can I have a Bloody Mary? Maybe, yeah. The liquor store's right there, right? Yes. I'll get you. Look, my shakes are gone, so yeah, back to normal. Whatever it is that it does to my brain, like, makes me feel like normal. I didn't know what to do. How, how drunk are you right now? Way you act and you're totally stone cold sober there is way more going on than just i am go oh. and later you're a dead woman walking if something dramatic doesn't happen you're not going to see christmas your daughter's going to do that by herself Why is she moving away from me right now? I don't You're know why. We're playing games. I'm not playing games. We're playing games. Christine's drunken behavior plays out all the time in front of my granddaughter. She's pulling for me? She's pulling for you? Really? Who's the one that's getting played with? Her! Not us! She is! My granddaughter has watched the fighting, the screaming, the yelling. She gets frantic. Are you with me? daughter knows that Christine drinks. She's actually witnessed Christine pumping hand sanitizer into her mouth. I can't imagine what that's like to be eight and see that. I'm a good mom to my daughter. I encourage her to do well in school, to make good decisions. I have never had anyone tell me that I'm a bad mom except for my family. Christine's no shape to be a good mom to my niece. My granddaughter has been raised by April, me, and her auntie Donna. Christine has actually told her daughter that I would try and kidnap her. There was a time my sister was upset that we had taken my niece away from her, so she drove to my mother's house, came in, slapped my mother, grabbed my niece, and took off with her in the car. The way Christine is living her life is completely unfair to her daughter. My granddaughter has lost a lot of her childhood. I fear that my niece is going to end up with an abusive husband or become an addict herself. You, you made the statement. 
There it is. Yeah. I'm a good mom. So here's what your your daughter has witnessed. Drinking hand sanitizer. Quote, three sheets to the wind, drunk with a friend in a hotel room, constantly drunk, never sober, driving drunk, falling out of the car when the door is open, seeing you passed out drunk, having a seizure, by your own description, confused, blackouts, in a fog, sobbing uncontrollably, often time and time again, screaming curse words, verbally attacking family, and physical altercations with family, and meeting strange men on dates. I did all on like two or three days. How I, drunk are you right now? I'm not drunk at all. Do you want to take my blood? You could take it. Well, I'm just asking. Oh, you. yeah. See, you think I'm drunk? No, I'm asking, you, I'm asking you. I'm asking you if you're drunk. Because if you're oh. not drunk, you're going to go into withdrawal soon. So I want to get to things really quick. Well, it's been a long time. And so I have, since I've had a drink, and I feel fine, Dr. Phil. When was the last time you had a drink? Um, actually, well, last night I did go down and I had a rum and coke. But then I went back upstairs and went to bed. Do you act? way you act and you're totally stone cold sober there is way more going on than just i am how it takes you do blood how are you stone cold not. sober right now when in the you car. have a breathalyzer or something you could do right now seriously so i'm serious right now seriously dr phil yes i do awesome thank god yes i love this i have no idea whether you're whether you're drunk or whether you're not, I just met you. I don't okay. know. Okay. But when that beeps, I okay. How, I'm, now is it like I just breathe in and blow it? Yeah, you just blow till it stops. Okay. Ready? Hang on. Go. Is that good? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I only had two Altoids upstairs for the lady, and a little bit of water. It says you're not drunk now. And as I said, the reason I ask is because I need to know how much time I have before you Michael, go in. It's probably going to happen right now. To <laughs> withdrawals because I've noticed no. you scratching the backs of your arms and scratching your nervous. forehead and well, doing all beings. kinds of things that are it's really significant to me oh. that you're beginning to have a problem. I, my heart is beating. I'm very nervous. Like, watching this is very upsetting. You have admitted to over half of those things. Mm -hmm. In our conversations with you, you've admitted to over half of those things. And just those half are enough for the Department of Child and Family Services to remove your daughter before dark today. And, do you, and, and you have this theory that there's something going on with your brain? I don't think clearly in this. This, you wake up in the well, morning and you I feel like you're going to you pass out. Do you realize what you're doing in drinking, what you're drinking? Yes. You, you ha how much, what's the most you've, you've had to drink for an extended period of time? One of those great big jugged ones. So you would drink, what, a half a gallon a day, a gallon a day? A half a gallon. So you drink, there's, there have been times when you've been drinking a half a gallon of vodka a day. It was a while. Okay, yes. and now you're drinking hand sanitizer. Next, is Christine essentially ingesting chemicals found in antifreeze, hairspray, and rubbing alcohol? We'll talk about what's damage she's potentially doing to her body when we come back. One time, Christine pulled into the driveway in front of me, and she opened her door and just fell out of the car. She was so drunk. I looked in the car, and my granddaughter was in the back seat. Another time, while being drunk on vanilla extract, she rear-ended a van that had a family in it. It should have been a wake-up call for her. It was a DUI, but she just started drinking again. There are times when I black out, when I don't remember getting myself ready for bed. I don't remember putting the laundry in the washing machine. 
I have to be reminded sometimes about what was said, what I had done. You hate my guts, and I hate your guts. If I get really stressed, I cry to the point I don't remember what was even going on at all. Christine admits that she's tried drinking vanilla extract, mouthwash, and now hand sanitizer so she could function. Now, I've asked Dr. Pat Basu, chief medical officer of my Doctor on Demand, to explain the dangers of drinking non-traditional forms of alcohol. So, uh, Dr. Basu, welcome. I appreciate you being here today. Good to see you, Dr. Paul. How are you? Now, Dr. Basu, talk about what she is actually putting in her body when she's drinking this. For starters, the alcohol level in hand sanitizer is about 70%. So, you know, if you want to compare that to even the strongest drinks, whiskey, you know, et cetera, that are about 40%, you're talking about a 30% higher alcohol content. In addition to just that incredibly high and, and frankly toxic concentration of of alcohol, there's other ingredients in the hand sanitizer, uh, ingredients that you'd find in things such as antifreeze, hairspray, uh, you know, other other just toxic chemicals that, that she's putting into her body. You know, it can have an incredibly deleterious and, and in some cases fatal effect uh, at, at those quantities. Okay, so so what we're talking about here, just so you understand, we're talking about glycerol, propanol, uh, isopropyl alcohol, ethanol, these are things that he's saying are in antifreeze, hairspray, things of that nature that can, doctor, these can absolutely rip a hole in your gastrointestinal tract, correct? Oh, there's no question about it. Uh, and that's all before it even begins to get into the liver. You know, the liver is taking 80 to 90 percent of, of the punch that that hand sanitizer is delivering. And it will kill uh, the hepatocytes, the, the cells that compose the liver. It will kill those in great quantities. Uh, certainly in the, the short and medium term, that liver will, will get shrunken and fibrotic, what we call cirrhotic. All right, now, this can actually cross the blood-brain barrier and actually go to the brain, correct? That's correct. Alcohol and, and certainly uh, you know the alcohol that, that's in this hand sanitizer will seep across, it's a small molecule, it will seep across that blood-brain barrier, cause direct effect in the brain, uh, instantaneously killing millions and millions of brain cells, and, uh, and, and certainly over time will lead to uh, confusion, their arms and their legs start to shake uh, as, as more and more of the brain gets damaged, and, and by that time the liver has certainly been, been pretty much shot as well. With ingesting this hand sanitizer as well as alcohol, what do you predict going forward? Unfortunately, I think this is an incredibly serious uh, case of, of alcoholism. And, you know, at any one of these instances, uh, this can result in a, in a fatality uh, for sure. And, Doctor, I, I want to be clear so everybody understands, because Doctor On Demand is an app that everybody can download and be face-to-face -face with either you or another doctor with a matter of seconds to handle routine uh, disorders, if they have uh, an acute crisis like poisoning or whatever, you recommend that they call 911 or the Poison Control Center, correct? That's correct, Dr. Phil. Doctor on Demand is a wonderful solution for everyday, very common medical problems, flu, urinary tract infection, pediatric questions. Uh, we can you know, prescribe medications for common solutions for, for emergent situations like this, uh, a complex condition where you know the patient could be uh, very much at life uh, um, life threatening risk uh, 911 is, is still the best way to go for sure all right we appreciate it dr. Basu um, uh, we appreciate it this man is he's a medical director for doctor on demand he's he served uh, as a, a White House fellow in the o Obama administration uh, faculty appointments at, at Stanford. He was named Consultant Physician of the Year at Stanford. He, he's, I mean, this this is the real deal guy. He's telling you, you keep drinking this stuff, it's going to kill you. You're going to have multiple organs shut down. You're going to die. Your daughter is going to grow up without her mother in her life. This is going to be a saving day in your life if you hear what I'm telling you. And if you don't, your daughter's going to stand at your graveside. 
She is going to throw a rose on top of your coffin. She is going to bury her mother in the ground if you don't pull your head out and get in the game here. You are killing yourself. You are killing your daughter's mother. And you don't have the right to do that. Christine uses my niece as a bargaining chip so that my mother won't make her pay any bills or kick her out. It's my daughter. You guys throw me out, you also are throwing her out. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. Trapped in a cult? I was kept as a sexual maiden. You turn your child over to this creep? I didn't know all those other things were happening. Isn't it your job to know? That's tomorrow. pick you up the other night you were drunk on your ass pick you up and I take you to a ass. hotel with I wasn't you drunk were drunk ass. on your ass and when you I came there. in the next morning you were totally are you tell me you weren't drunk the following morning I, I wasn't no oh my god I'm not talking to you now, Christine has been through three rehabs she's been divorced twice she's raising a young daughter that's caught in the middle of this drunken chaos. There's yelling, there's fighting, there, there's, there, there's drunk, there's seizures. I mean, the, 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 what this child is being dragged through is absolutely criminal, and one way or another, it's going to stop today. Now, Tony says Christine moved in with her two years ago to get sober. Dawn and April say, yeah, right. Part of the reason Christine can't get her act together is their enabling mother, Tony. Don constantly tells me I'm enabling Christine and I need to throw her out so she can hit bottom. Christine's a moocher. My mom doesn't require Christine to contribute to the household at all. I do feel like my mother is enabling. Christine uses my niece as a bargaining chip so that my mother won't make her pay any bills or kick her out. It's my daughter. You guys throw me out, you also are throwing her out. While Christine was in her coma, I asked my mom if things would change with her enabling if she woke up. And she said, yes, my mom has not changed. My mom is consumed with making things easier for Christine until she dies. I don't know why my mom continues to do what she does for Christine. I think she just needs someone to take care of. If it was my house, I wouldn't let Christine just lie around and drink. I want my mom to kick Christine out. I'm afraid to let her leave. I think she would drink enough hand sanitizer to kill herself. What, what the hell's the matter with you people? What? It's, just, it's bothering me that my mom's now getting attacked. These two are sitting oh, here like it's come perfect. On. Dr. You, Dr. Phil, uh, does everything sit in? Christine. No, you are. I should have done. I should have. I should have. You are. I should have gotten. You, uh, maybe it would have done something different. I just. I just. I don't feel. Where was this conversation at home? I don't understand why. Yeah, we can't no, feel I don't. Like this I've at talked home. to mom like this. I don't talk to no, you guys. No, you don't. Oh, you're when horrific. that, when everything was going on, no, I don't do talk. You're right. I don't talk to mom like that. To you're horrific. Okay. And I'm. I don't. I, I. This all sounds so empty. I don't feel like she's normal. I feel like the hand sanitizer and the drinking has. I don't think she makes any decent decisions. I don't think she can live. No. I. I, I don't, I'm in a place where I don't know what to do. My little granddaughter, she's told her that I can't, that I'm mean to her, to Christine, and that I'm hurting her. And then if I kick her out, my little granddaughter is going to think that I hurt her mother. I feel like I'm just being pulled in a million different directions and not knowing the right thing to do. Well, let's, let's you and I talk here, just parent to parent. Yes. What, what, what do you really think is going on with your daughter here? I feel like Christine has something wrong with her brain, and she is insane now. I don't think she's even sane. She's going to die. And so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So you're in over your head. Or, oh, yes. 
Yes. You're in way over your head. Way, way, way over my head. It's like, kick me out, bitch. Go right ahead. Then your granddaughter's going to be living under a bridge with a dead mother. That's pretty much the bottom line, isn't it? Okay, um, here's, I'm going to tell you what I think is going on, and then I'm going to tell you what I think needs to happen, okay? Um, I think what's going on is the three of you are being held hostage. Uh, you've got emotional extortion here, and the gun she's holding to your head is this eight-year-old child yes. uh, because she's got leverage. It's like, kick me out, bitch. Go right ahead because I'm going to take her with me, and then your, your granddaughter's going to be living under a bridge with a dead mother. That's pretty much the bottom line, isn't it? Isn't that your nightmare? Isn't that what oh, you wake up little yes, with? Absolutely. You kick her out, she dies, absolutely. your granddaughter's on the street, yes. blaming you for her mother's death for the yes. rest of her life. Yes. So basically, you're keeping her there to make yourself feel better. You know it's not in her best interest. You know it's not in your granddaughter's best interest. You're just keeping her there so you don't become the villain. I, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I'm, I'm out of it. I don't know. I've checked You're paying out. the ransom. Yes. That's the ransom. The ransom demand is you do what I want to do or you have to feel guilty. So you're parenting from guilt. Kick me out and you're going to feel guilty because I'm going to be dead. Your granddaughter's going to blame you for the rest of her life. Live with that, bitch. That's pretty much her message, right? Yes, it is. Okay, am I Absolutely. missing something here? Nope. If I run a red that light, stop nope. me. Nope, that is right. That, that's, that's pretty exactly much the deal. It. And so that's the leverage that she's had up until today. Yes. But she's not right. going to have that after today. Because this child cannot stay in this situation. Oh. This child is in harm's way. This child is being neglected. This child is being abused. This child is being subjected to mental, emotional, and verbal abuse. Yes. Yes. And that's not okay. That has to stop. Okay? And you, you can say you started, they started, or you just all come together like, you know, a, a powder keg. I, you know, I don't care. But what I do care is that there's an innocent child without a voice or a vote, and she's caught in the middle of this, and she needs to be rescued, and I'm going to make sure that happens one way or the other, okay? And I'm going to give you what those choices are after the break. You can choose A or you can choose B, but either way, this child is getting off the E-ride after the break. By the way, there is a father here. Uh, we invited him to be on the show. He agreed, and then he decided not to be part of it, and he sent us a statement that I'll read in part. He said, after discussing this further with my wife, we've decided that it's not a good idea for me to participate on the show tomorrow, and I'll explain why. The fact is that getting away from Christine is part of the consideration for us accepting this assignment halfway around the world. The only thing I care about in that situation is my daughter. I've wasted literally years of my life worrying about Christine and what was going to happen next. I don't want to get sucked back into this. I want my daughter. Christine can take care of herself. I have less faith in her ability to take care of herself and an eight-year-old girl. The last thing I want to say is that I owe Christine's family, especially Tony and April, a debt that I can never repay. So that's what he says. You're a dead woman walking. And if something dramatic doesn't happen, you're not going to see Christmas. 
your daughter's going to do that by herself. I think you need some serious and intensive inpatient treatment. You and I agree about two things. We agree you're an alcoholic. And strangely enough, you have some theory that there's something wrong with your brain. And I agree. I, I do think there's neurological involvement here. You need to be in a dual diagnosis treatment center where we're able to look at you biochemically, hormonally, psychologically, addictively, every possible way. I've talked to Ben Levinson at Origins Treatment Center on South Padre Island, and they have agreed to take you into their dual diagnosis program down there. It's a place called Hannah's House which is the women's unit down there. You're looking at pictures of it right now. It's absolutely beautiful on South Padre Island. Totally I've also better. talked to the people at PNP Center, Dr. Frank Lawless, and he's agreed to bring his multidisciplinary team to look at your brain and figure out what's going on. And I'm willing to make that available to you if you're willing to do that. The alternative is I'm going to arrange for the removal of your daughter from this family unit and place her in foster care. The choice is yours, but the you're going to make easy. it today. Are you willing to make that commitment? I am willing to make the commitment because I mean my daughter's leaving. And are you guys more. willing to see after this precious child? Yes. Yes. Of I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Origins and the PNP Center. A special thanks to Dr. Pat Basu and our medical team at Doctor On Demand for assisting us with our guests today. Doctor On Demand is an app that, uh, as, as you know, is my own. Uh, if you want it, you can download it from uh, the App Store or Google Plays, and then you can click on it, and you can be face-to-face -face with a doctor in a matter of seconds. We'll see you next time. Thanks for being here.